Another update on the never-ending story, the tomato. Uh, it's a bit sort of turned up, but I'm now in the process of making this. Well, not making it, just modifying it. This is the gear linkage, and I've taken off all the rust. Well, I've taken off most of the rust um, that was on it originally. It was actually looking pretty ropey. Uh, but um, the problem I've got with this gear linkage is if you look in that end there, if you can even see in there, guessing not. Nope, it's not going to focus, but there's a rubber bush in there. And that end, rubber bush is pretty much gone. And uh, that's the end that was up on the um, mechanism, the rotating mechanism thing that goes on top of the steering rack. This end goes at the bottom of the gear lever, so it's, it just does that, basically. It wasn't doing the left and right across the gate, this is just the fore and aft. So I need to sort this out. Surprisingly, if you go down to Citroen and say, have you got a gear linkage for a 1989 Citroen BX? They go, a what? So the problem I've got is that I've got to try and replace this without actually being able to replace it. So I'm going to modify this one. And to that end, I have bought some of these. That is like a little screw-on ball joint socket thing. And basically, I'm gonna cut these off here, that you can see, I'm gonna cut these off and weld these on. That's the, that is it, that is, and there's no rubber bush in these. These have got, these are metal inside, but they've got a spring retainer. If you've fitted like aftermarket boot strut lifters and things, you'll be familiar with this. But yeah, you just, that's how they lock on. So they won't wear out either. You just fill them for the grease, put that on, done. The only thing I have got to get right, well, I've got to get it all right, but the only thing I really need to get right is the positioning of them, because if I get them in the wrong uh, axis, if you like, because they're not, <laughs> it's not dead straight, look. See? It's not in line there, and it's not in line there, because it's kicking up at the end. So they've got to be in the right axis, because the joints that they're expecting to meet will not be complete 90 degree angles, so I've got to get it exactly right. I'm just going to try and do that by marking on the bar where the center point is. So I'm going to cut this end off first. This end should be good because it's pretty much the same size. In fact, it couldn't be more perfect. So it's just a case of chopping this off and welding this on. But that end's going to need chopping about here somewhere and then being careful about, well, where I weld it back on, basically. No going back. Ooh, that's quite a thick bar. Right, there we go. So, this is the uh, end I'm putting on. Well balanced, doesn't it? See, what I've done is I've turned the bolt down, screwed that into the end of it, so that it's a nice snug fit. And then I'm just gonna, I mean, the quickest way to do it is to weld around here. But the prettier way to do it is to weld to the bolt that I've just um, put in there, drill some holes, weld to that. That means you'd be able to unscrew the end as well. But then that means that the end might unscrew itself, which we don't want. So, no, the right thing to do is just to weld it. I'm gonna stop being a tart. I'm just gonna weld it around here. Try and make it pretty. Uh, welding round in circles is quite difficult, so we'll see how that goes. I think you're going to be getting a visit from Mr. Grinder. This is the tomato steering rack. You can't see it. There. I have spent a long time cleaning this. I know it doesn't look it, but oh, that took a long time. Um, and basically now what I have to do is change some stuff because the gator here is split and that is a nightmare to change because you have to take the ram off. And the gator here is split. I don't think it was, but it is split. I thought it was just, you know, old and tatty, but also it's got a floppy end. So if you can hear the play, well, that one, yeah. 
um, and I'm dripping LHM everywhere. So the rack ends are knackered, the gaiters are knackered, the track rod ends weren't, but they had to be beaten off, so yeah, basically I'm going to have to take this apart so I can change these boots and these rack end joints because they've got play, which means when you drive down the road, you can hold the steering wheel totally straight, the wheels will have a tiny amount of play. You don't want that, you want it to be nice and direct with feedback, probably. Uh, the rack itself on the BX is completely conventional. Um, it's a standard rack and pinion, you know, type steering rack with uh, a steering ram. The rams on the outside, a lot of cars they're not, but the rams on the outside on these, but it works completely conventionally. It's got a pinion valve here, which has got a torsion bar in it, and the more that torsion bar is twisted, the more it opens the valve, pinion valve, and the more fluid is put into the cylinder or pulled out the cylinder to help you with the steering. It's a completely conventional setup. It does run on LHM. There is green blood dripping out of it everywhere. Um, but it is a standard type steering rack. In fact, I think these rams are used on Peugeot 405s as well. Um, alloy body, quite a, yeah, quite a light piece really. Yeah, but it's, it's, there's nothing really crazy about it. If you want to see crazy Citroen suspension, you need to see an SM. Did I, I've got an SM, did I mention that? I should have to go and mention that. So yeah, uh, job now is to remove the ram, which is just bolted onto the outside. This is an LHM return pipe. Um, take this ram off, which means I'm doing two, either those two or these two unions. I'll probably go with those two. Um, take that off that way. Um, it'd be easy, obviously I'll have to do that to take that gator off, but I'm going to take off the rack ends as well, and that makes it even easier to change the gator because they need changing basically. They're all split. I don't know what brand this is. It doesn't even look that old, but it is, well, there you go. It's difficult to film here. Yeah, that's kind of split. Modern rubber. Yay. So, oh, I'm drooping LHM again. Right. Right, there's the rim out of the way. So if I squeeze this, fluid will come spurting out. But I've got nothing to do that into. Oh, hang on. Oh, I have. This should be full of fluid. There you go. And now it's not. That's weird. I'd never actually paid attention to that, but the uh, they've got standard flares on the pipes. It's the only part of the hydraulic system I've ever seen on a Citroen that has that. The bush in there is looking a little sad as well. <laughs> Although I think it's just, it's probably the original one. Blech. So now the trick is to remove this skater. Yeah, this stud, you have to get the boot up and over that, which isn't fun. This boot here just sort of presses out and presses in. That's just the gator for the outer joint. But I can remove this joint because it is cream crackered. Yeah, look at that. That is shot. To get this off, this is always fun. I'm probably going to have to take it back out of the vise, put this bit in the vise. Let's see if I get this boot off first. Put um, fluff on there. Yeah, I'll put that bit in the vise and then undo this winds out from the outside of it. I've actually got new ones because I'm not just going to leave them. I'm going to fit new ones. You can see what they look like. There we go. Shiny new one, which is not in focus. Still not in focus. Still not in focus. Still not in focus. Really? Well, there's a new one anyway. So that comes 
off of there. Now what people have to do on the car is stretch this over the top of all that. Sometimes while the track rod end is still on there. And as you can imagine, that is not how you go about having a fun time. Right, so I've got the joints off. They are shot. That's one of them. And that one, that is absolutely knackered. For reference, Yeah, that's um, wiggle, wiggle, stir, stir. So yeah, these are shagged. Um, I need to get this boot off. I mean, the easiest way to get this one off is actually just to cut it off, uh, which I will do. But putting it on, I don't have that luxury. I'm gonna have to get it over the top of that, and that means I'm gonna to have to clean it all and everything first, because I don't wanna trap a load of gunk in there. But what I thought I would do before I do this, the problem with a lot of these aftermarket boots on BXs is that they don't crush down enough, because believe it or not, the original gaiters that Citroen used to use on these and on uh, later Citroen's AXs, Saxos, had like a plastic type, which aren't as flexible, but then they don't need to be flexible, because unlike normal cars, this bit here and this bit here don't flex up and down like a normal steering rack. They don't have to do that like a normal cars because the ball joint is in here. The ball joint goes on that side, on the driver's side and on the passenger side, obviously it's beyond this gator. So they, they don't flex around. They can be this kind of plastic that just concertinas, um, but only the genuine ones, and I've seen Febby um, supply them like that. Everything else seems to be rubber. Um, and in this case, the rubber is potentially too, too big. Because when, this, when I was taking this apart, it had ridden up over the top of this ridge here, although that won't be helped that someone's left that in there. That rubber ring there is supposed to be for the um, plastic gaiters to, to sort of seal to. Because um, obviously plastic gaiters don't seal. So they have a rubber band they seal to, but that can be taken out if you're putting a rubber one on. I mean, really, you're not supposed to put rubber ones in, but that's what they all are. Um, so the other thing I'd noticed is that the original, the replacement one I've got here, and I've gone for an SKF one because SKF are the OEM suppliers for, well, potentially for some of this. It depends on the year it was made. I don't know at the time, but um, SKF made the uh, bearings for the rear trailing arms and various other pieces. Um, on my Mark I, he actually uses Continental gaiters and, you know, joints and things. But, and one thing I've noticed straight away is that this has got less ribs in it than the one that's fitted. So this will actually compress right down, whereas this one won't ever compress as much because it's got more ribs in it. So that is not ideal and is going to cause problems. So that's just, I mean, that's just different brands. This is the, the pitfalls of using non-genuine parts. You know, you can use non-genuine parts as long as you know which brands to go for. And unfortunately, the aftermarket manufacturers won't have the time or resources to research how the parts are supposed to be done. They will just see it's a gator, it's that long, it's that much diameter, we'll make one for it and put in X number of ribs. So this eventually will have to slide over there and I will probably put this in hot water before I do that. I'm just cleaning the end of this with a wire brush. Because what you don't want is to put the gator over it and drag a load of rubbish and rust and dirt and everything into here. Um, you know, if you were doing this against the clock, like in a normal garage, you probably wouldn't bother doing this. Oops. Needs a good clean, this. But, uh, I think you do the little extra bits like this. Because you've got to look after these cars. It'd be stupid if a steering rack ended up just being thrown back together with grit in it and it ended up killing the rack. 
I don't know if you'd be able to get a rack for one of these now. I mean, probably would. You can see the actual rack here. This, all these sort of teeth along here, and on the underside of this is just a shaft with a cog on it. And when that cog turns, it just eats its way along the teeth here and back again. So, it's actually very, very simple how it works. All right, so I've got the new uh, rack end joint hanging on here, load of grease as well, just to help things along. There we go. And then I'll just pop this over the top here, he says. That will go on there like so. If anything, that's a little bit big, but never mind. And then they just give you cable ties to do it up with. And then the smaller one can go on yeah, like this. And it's very slippery. There we go. Right, so I've bought me uh, steering rack gator up to boil nicely. It's now very hot and very wet. So I don't want it to go on the steering rack wet. So I'm gonna have to try and dry it, but it should now be stretchy. I've also put a bit of grease over the end here on the rack. I'm not gonna be leaving that there, but. Oh yeah, that's so. Uh... Oh, the water's just run off it actually. Oh wow. <laughs> that's impressive. So that should, oh no. It would help if I did that. So that should now just gracefully slide over the top. This job is so much harder on the car and it has to be said that I think if on any of my own cars, certainly if I ever need to change this gator in the future, I will probably just take the rack out there we go. Yeah, come on. There we go. Okay, that that doesn't actually fit. Oh, I'll get the SKF ones because they're good. It's too big. <laughs> he said. <laughs>